Right, okay, um, now this is uh, seven videos on for integration by substitution, and in this one I am going to look at probably the hardest uh, integration by substitution question I've seen on an exam paper at this level. Um, it is uh, a definite integral um, involving uh, trigonometric identities, and it carried a lot of marks. Um, in this case, um, it had a, two parts, A and part B. Part A carried three marks, and part B carried nine marks. So overall, 12 marks were carried. So that is a lot of marks for one question on an integration. So we're going to work through this steadily. We'll see how we go. Um, so we're going to start off with this x is equal to cosec theta. This is the substitution that you are given. And first of all, uh, in this problem, you are asked to show that dx by d theta is minus cosec theta cot theta. Um, so that's what we're going to do first. Because whenever we do this, we always start with the substitution, and we find dx by d theta, or du by dx in all those examples that I've been working through. But now we're making this substitution, so it's actually dx by d theta. Okay. So, um, in order to do this, to differentiate um, cosec, you need to know that cosec is 1 over sine. Okay. Now, 1 over sine, in order to... E uh, to differentiate that, sorry, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So we look at the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is just zero. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom. Okay, so we've got the top times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is cos theta over the bottom squared. So this simplifies to zero, take away cos, over sine squared. So that's minus cos theta over sine squared. Now that is minus um, how, let me just check how we want it first. Right, okay. That's minus 1 over sine theta times cos theta over sine theta. Okay? I've just split it into two fractions multiplied together. So you should recognize that that is equal to minus cosec theta cot theta. Okay? So that was the first step. That was the three marks to make sure you could do that. So we've got a replacement. Well, we haven't got a replacement for dx quite yet, okay, I've still got to, with dx by d theta being this, you can multiply both sides by the d theta, and I now have a replacement for dx, okay, so this can be replaced with this. Now I'd best have a look at also changing the limits. Okay, so we're going to have to change the limits. So we have um, currently we've got on the x-axis, we're going from root 2 to 2. And we want to be on the theta axis. Okay, so when x is root 2, you is equal to, oh sorry, not you, I'm going to keep on getting this confused. When x is root 2, we've got root 2 
is equal to cosec theta. Now, cosec is 1 over sine. So sine theta is 1 over root 2. Okay. Now, um, if you know your triangles, or you can just do this straight on your calculator, um, how do I want this? 1, 1 root 2, then that's pi over 4. Okay, so um, opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2, so theta is pi over 4. So root 2 is going to pi over 4. And we also have when x is uh, 2, 2 is equal to cosec theta. So um, 2 is equal to 1 over sine theta. So sine theta equals 1 half. Now that's using the other triangle. That's pi over 3. That's pi over 6. 1, 2, root 3. So opposite over hypotenuse, so theta is pi over 6. Also, you could have done that using your calculator. Okay. Now, pi over 6 is less than pi over 4. So that's pi over 6. That's pi over 4. So 2 is getting replaced with pi over 6. And root 2 is getting replaced with pi over 4. So you'll notice there's been a bit of a flip between the two, um, which you need to take into account. Now, um, so let's see what we've got. We've currently got root 2 replaced with pi over 4, and 2 replaced with pi over 6. Okay? Now, we've also got x squared is cosec squared theta on the bottom of the fraction, and inside we've got cosec squared minus 1 dx has been replaced with minus cosec theta cot theta d theta okay this bit was in green so it's not looking terribly friendly now this cosec squared minus one okay um, let's look at that because if you refer back to the trig identities that you either remember yourself or you work out each time, if you go back to the original trig identity, sine squared plus cos squared plus 1 equals 1, then cosec squared is going to come from dividing through by sine squared. So that's 1 plus cot squared theta is cosec squared theta. That's the identity. So cosec squared... minus 1 is cot squared theta. So I can replace what is inside this square root with cot squared, which then, because you're square rooting, will just be cot theta. Okay? So this will be cosec squared times cot theta. So we've got pi over 6, pi over 4, cosec squared theta, cot theta, now here comes the cancellation, because you should see that you've got cot theta over cot theta here, and they can disappear, okay, they cancel, you've got a cosec over cosec squared, so the cosec can cancel with one of the cosecs that's there, leaving you with the integral of pi over 6, pi over 4. I'll bring that minus out the front as well. Of 1 over cosec theta, d theta. 
Now, a couple of things I can do here just to simplify matters is that because you've got a minus out the front of the integral and you've got these integral signs the wrong way round to how these limits, if you flip the limits, that changes the sign of the integral. So this is the same as be having pi over 6 on the bottom, pi over 4, and it cancelling with that minus sign. The 1 over cosec is sine, okay, back to where we started. So now we've got it down to this nice looking interval. Right. So sine theta integrates to minus cos theta, evaluated between pi over 4 and pi over 6, which is minus cos pi over 4, take away minus cos of pi over 6. Now cos of pi over 4, adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over root 2. Also, you can put that in your calculator. Plus, two minuses there. Cos of pi over 6 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's root 3 over 2. Now, um, rationalizing the denominator of this is root 2 over 2, so that's minus root 2 over 2 plus root 3 over 2. Because the denominator is the same, you could write that as one half root three minus root two. Okay, rearrange the order, bring a half out to the front, and you can write it finally like that. So that is the complicated integration by substitution problem. Um, it is very challenging. There are a lot of errors where you could go wrong. There are a lot of different techniques involved. It brings about so many different ideas. Um, it is an excellent problem to practice as uh, one that will test and improve your mathematical ability and skill. Um, there is no promising that you will get a question like this on the paper, um, but seeing as this came up um, only um, two years ago, um, you've got to think that maybe this is something you've got to, you might well have to deal with. And I say two years ago, but this this is this is me filming in two thousand thirteen. Okay, so um, obviously in a year's time, when this video is out of date, um, you can imagine how far back the paper was. Okay, so um, that is the difficult one.